celebrating uh, Black History Month with, with guest speakers on uh, this month. And I am happy glad to have in our presence Minister Jasmine Chambers. Um, we were in a few classes together. And like I mentioned when I was uh, sharing my thoughts on uh, Reverend Antonio Reed, that, um, and now this is your time. This is your time. So we were at, um, we were at uh, Seven Last Words. And in class, Jasmine is so quiet. And, and, and I've, as I've heard all my life, you got to watch out for them quiet folks. <laughs> she was always quiet, but she gave a mighty word on that day, that evening. And I, as I said before, I pondered it in my heart. And so when I was thinking about um, what, you know, when well, I was thinking about February and, and having guest speakers, she came, she was one of the people that came to mind. And so when I called her, uh, she was, you know, I reached out to her and she was very um, willing to, to come and support us and come and share a word. So we, we thank you uh, for that. And so Minister Jasmine Chambers is a native of Fort Worth, Texas and a member of Como First Missionary Baptist Church. Jasmine holds a bachelor's degree in journalism from the University of North Texas North Texas in the house, <laughs> and a master's in uh, theology and ministry from Bright Divinity School on the campus of TCU. Jasmine is the creator and host of the Mind Time podcast, which is a Christian podcast for the growing believer, where she challenges Christians to think more critically about their faith by addressing topics like, is your God in pieces? Six ways to know if God really has your heart. And is my sin a big deal if I'm already saved? Jasmine believes it is her life's mission to train young professionals, teach the next generation, and tell people about Jesus in any way she can. When biblically teaching, while biblically teaching is Jasmine's first passion, mm -hmm. she always considers it a privilege to stand and declare the word of God. So after these next two songs, the next voice that you will hear is the voice of Minister Jasmine Chambers. Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise. Oh. <laughs> well, chief. No, we're not. <laughs> I used to lead this song when we had the men's choir <laughs> when we were in the building. <laughs> and as Reverend Lisa sent this to me to, in, a, in, in a text, I said, oh, no, she didn't. <laughs> but yes, she did. <laughs> so I'm used to having a little musical background with me, but I'm going to do it a cappella this time. So, <laughs> so bear with me. Uh, and if you feel like joining in, please join in. Please. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, I see. <laughs> He's looking down. <laughs> Here we go. Trouble in my way. Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. So much trouble, trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night. But that's alright. That's alright. I know that Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. I see that Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. I know that Jesus, Jesus, he will fix it. After a while, after a while, trouble in my way, trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes, I have to cry sometimes. So much trouble, trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes, I have to cry sometimes. I live awake at night. I live 
that's all right. That's all right. I know that a Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. I see that a Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. I know that a Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. After a while. After a while. Stepped in the furnace. Stepped in the furnace. A long time ago. A long And a bender go, and a bender go. They wasn't worth. They weren't worth. For this I know. This I know. I know that Jesus. Jesus, He will fix it. I say that Jesus. Jesus, He will fix it. I know that Jesus. Jesus, He will fix it. After a while, after a while, trouble in my way, trouble in my way, I have to cry sometimes, I have to cry sometimes, so much trouble, trouble in my way, I have to cry sometimes, I have to cry sometimes, I lay awake at night, I lay awake at night, but that's all right. I know that Jesus, Jesus, He will fix it. I see that Jesus, Jesus, He will fix it. I know that Jesus, Jesus, He will fix it. Oh yes, yeah, Jesus, Jesus, He will fix it. Oh my Jesus, Jesus, He will fix it. I see that Jesus, Jesus, He will fix it. Oh yes, yeah, Jesus, Jesus, He will fix it. After a while, after a while, hallelujah, Jesus will fix it. If we just wait on it, he's going to fix it. Not in our time, but in his time, Jesus is going to fix it. After a while, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Right. Praise God. <laughs> yes, he will. Yeah, I looked at him while ago before when the pastor first got up here. I say. <laughs> he like. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I told him if you don't want to do it, I'll do it. <laughs> it ain't no problem. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. He did it though. Amen. 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 Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for the word that is coming before us as we sing. The hymn of preparation, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior, found on page 162 in your hymnals. If you would stand with me as we sing this song. Pass me not, O Gentle Savior. Let me at the throne of 
mercy, find a sweet relief, find a sweet relief. Kneeling there in deep contrition, kneeling there in deep contrition. Help my unbelief. I'm calling Gracious God, our Father, we just stop by today to say thank you. God, we thank you for another day that was not promised to us and a day, God, that many did not see. We thank you, God, for your grace and allowing us to assemble one more time in your house, God, to lift you up. For you said in your word, if I, if I be lifted up, that I will draw all men unto me. Yes, God, in this preaching hour, we just ask, dear Heavenly Father, that you would send your spirit. Yes. God, hide me behind this sacred desk, God, and that you would speak to your people as only you can. Yes, God, for I don't know what the issues and the struggles and the, the situations are, God, but you know all about them. Oh, yes. And you said that your word would not return unto you void. Mm -hmm. So right now in this moment, God, yes, yes, God. prepare hearts and minds. Oh, yes. Speak as only you can. Save as only you can. Uplift and deliver as only you can. Yes, Lord. God, and then when this moment comes to an end, we'll be so careful to give your name all of the glory, the honor, and the praise. Oh, yes. It's in Jesus' name that we ask all of these things. Yes. Amen. 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 First, give an honor to God, um, yes. who is truly amazing in my life. Amen. Um, and to the shepherd of this house, uh, Pastor Jones. Um, now, you know, he always want to say, you know, other people are quiet, you know. <laughs> but now I came the second Sunday, and uh, I was a little surprised. Because <laughs> I'm not the only one that's quiet on campus, and, and y'all pastor got a little fire. I was, so, well, 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 what's going on? <laughs> And so to see you in your element uh, and watch you come alive has been a great joy. So back at you. Back at you. Um, and, and give an honor to the First Lady, Sister Jones. I, I just want to tell you, I have a special affinity for First Lady Joneses. Um, the First Lady of my home church, uh, Dana Jones, um, has been a mentor to me since I was 11 years old. Um, and it's just something about y'all. Y'all just have sweet spirits. I don't, I don't know what it is, but First Lady Jones <laughs> have sweet spirits. Um, and so getting to meet you the other Sunday, um, you can just tell. And so you, you put up with this one. I know you're strong too. So, you know, we, you, you're doing good. You're doing good. Keeping them in line, you know, working it out. So um, to God be the glory um, for you all and the leadership of this church. Um, and I'm just grateful for uh, the invitation and an opportunity to share um, with your flock. I want to recognize um, somebody who's special to me. Um, we go back. I don't know, since he was eight or nine, I used to, I used to watch him uh, when his mom was in choir rehearsal. And so we used to talk and uh, to watch this young man, Xavier, grow up. Um, and then I was a Sunday school teacher for seven years. And so when I taught the young adults, he was like in middle school or getting ready to go into high school. He's like, I'm coming to your class. <laughs> so he was the youngest person in my class. And then when I taught the high school class, he was kind of old. He was like, I'm still coming to your class. <laughs> Um, and so to watch this young man grow up and to be here um, and just to see what God is doing in your life, um, Xavier, I'm, I'm just encouraged. A recent grad from Paul Quinn. And so um, God is doing some uh, wonderful, 
wonderful things. Um, and so for all of you joining us online, um, just bid you greetings in the name of Jesus. So um, to get to it, if you will join me in 2 Samuel, I will be coming out of 2 Samuel chapter 9 um, today, and I'm going to read that text in its entirety <clears throat> and then end up with our theme verse uh, for this month, 2 Samuel chapter 9. I'm going to read this out of the NIV. Verse one, and David asked, is there anyone still left in the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of Saul's household named Ziba. They summoned him to appear before David and the king said to him, are you Ziba at your service? He replied, and the king asked, is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Ziba answered the king, there is still a son of Jonathan. He is lame in both feet. Where is he, the king asked. Ziba answered, he is at the house of Makir, son of Amiel in Lodabar. So King David had him brought from Lodabar from the house of Makir, son of Amiel. And when Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. David said, Mephibosheth, at your service, he replied. Don't, don't be afraid, David said to him, for surely I will show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will always eat at my table. Mephibosheth bowed down and said, what is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me? Mm. Then the king summoned Ziba, saw, Ziba Saul's steward and said to him, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons and your servants are to farm the land for him and bring in the crops so that your master's grandson may be provided for. And Mephibosheth, grandson of your master, will always eat at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. And Ziba said to the king, your servant will do whatever my lord the king commands his servant to do. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table like one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth himself had a young son named Micah and all the members of Ziba's household were servants of Mephibosheth. And Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem because he always ate at the king's table. He was lame in both feet. And then for our theme scripture of this month, Hebrews 12 verse one, it says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Mm -hmm. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Mm -hmm. Now, have you ever encountered a person who has way too much faith in themselves? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like y'all on the road and they talk like they know where they're going. But when you ask them if they know where they're going, they usually say something like, yeah, I mean, it's a straight shot down 35, going to be right off the freeway. You can't miss it only for y'all to end up lost for two hours. <laughs> You know, you over there fuming and mad and you trying not to yell, but you just trying to figure out, okay, well, now, now what now what are we going to do? <laughs> or have you ever found yourself in a bind, you know, and you with that person who always knows a guy that no matter what's broken, they can always fix it and give you a good deal on it? <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, you know, um... Your pipes bust, yeah, man, I know a guy. <laughs> the engine go out in your car, yeah, man, I, I got a guy. <laughs> They're always talking about a guy that they know, <laughs> but the guy don't ever come through. <laughs> or maybe you're like me and you don't um like to read the instructions. Uh -oh. <laughs> that come with things like how to put together a bookshelf. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because it's a bookshelf. How hard can it be? You got two sides, the top, the bottom, two shelves. It's fine. No need to read the instructions. I put many bookshelves together, but when you get ready to stand it up, it's, um, 
It's a little wobbly. It's leaning. And then you come to realize that you done screwed one shelf in backwards. You know, with the rest side showing. <laughs> And so now you were left trying to figure out, okay, well, well now, you know, is it worth doing over? We just go prop it up and hope nobody knows it or, you know, get you some electrical tape like I did and just cover up the rough part. <laughs> Looks just like the rest of the bookshelf. There's always a defining moment when you've gone as far as you can go by faith. Mm -hmm. And you have to figure out what to do next. Mm. Mm. So as we close out this Black History Month theme, the title of my message today is, we've come this far by faith, so now what? <laughs> if there is anybody who could say with a straight face, no lies detected, no cap and no red flags, that he got to where he was by faith, it is King David. Mm. When we first met David, he was on the field, out in the field, keeping sheep and being looked over and passed over by his own father. Mm -hmm. But by faith, David was called from keeping sheep and being to being anointed king over Israel. And yet when all the pomp and circumstance was over, by faith, he went back to the field and kept feeding the sheep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By faith, David was called into service as King Saul's armor bearer to play his heart for him every time he was tormented by an evil spirit. And then he would leave the palace and by faith, go back home and feed his father's sheep. Mm -hmm. By faith, David was sent by his father to take some food to his older brothers who were at war. And by faith, David slew an uncircumcised Philistine giant by the name of Goliath, with one stone to the forehead. Mm -hmm. By faith, David became a warrior and a general in King Saul's army. And even when King Saul got jealous of him because the people were singing out in the streets, well, Saul has killed his thousands, mm -hmm. but David his ten thousands. Mm -hmm. And Saul, <clears throat> but David vowed to never lay his hand against Saul because he was God's anointed. Mm -hmm. By faith, David moved by faith, God moved Saul to Dave, out of David's way when he died in battle. And by faith, David was appointed the next king of Israel, as was prophesied. Mm -hmm. See, when you get to where God has promised you to be by faith, there is not a trail of unrighteousness behind you. Mm. You don't have to lie to get what God has for you. You don't have to tear down anybody else to get what God has for you. You don't have to touch God's anointed or talk about the pastor to get what God has for you. You don't have to cheat. You don't have to lie. You don't have to cut corners or make deals with the devil. You simply have to walk by faith yes. and trust God yes. to work everything else Amen. out. Amen. So by the time we get to today's text, King David is at his, so now what stage? Mm -hmm. God has kept his promise and elevated David to the highest office of the land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so now what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you do when you've gotten your degree and secured your dream job? Mm -hmm. What do you do now that you're retired and you can watch your stories every day and still get a check? <laughs> what do you do now that you've raised your children and God is blessing you to see your legacy in your grandchildren and your great grandchildren? Yeah. You've gotten this far by faith, and so now what? <laughs> yeah. mm. Well, yeah. mm -hmm. well, my brothers and sisters, I just dropped by to tell you that it is time to run. <laughs> now, I know you're laughing, Pastor, but I know you feel tired, you think your work is done, your knees hurt, your back aches, your nerves are bad, and the Lord has brought you a mighty <laughs> long way, but there are some things that you need to remember, some people you still need to uplift, and some relationships that God still needs you to nurture. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. It's time to run. Now, in verse one of today's text, it looks like David is just trying to find somebody to be nice to. <laughs> but what's really happening is that David is having a moment of remembrance. Mm -hmm. If you know anything about David, then you know that David was best friends with Saul's son, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And it was an unlikely friendship because David had been anointed the next king of Israel, which should have been Jonathan's anointing mm -hmm. because he was the son of the future king. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when Jonathan recognized the call on David's life, he fully committed himself to helping David, even when it meant going against his father and giving up willfully his own fight mm -hmm. for the throne. Mm -hmm. So when David was about to go on the run because King Saul was about to kill him, Jonathan helped David escape. But before he left, he made David promise him two things. Mm. In 1 Samuel chapter 20, verses 14 and 15, Jonathan made David promise, number one, to show him unfailing kindness like the Lord's kindness. Mm -hmm. And number two, for David not to ever cut off this kindness from his family for as long as David lived. Mm -hmm. So now let me break down what happened just in case you missed it. Basically, Jonathan secured the bag, as the young folks <laughs> like to say, and set up life insurance <laughs> all in two verses of scripture. <laughs> now, the truth be told, some of us have been working 20 years and still don't have the bag or the policies in place, but this is why I like Jonathan, mm -hmm. because he makes David promise to show him and his family kindness like the Lord's kindness. Mm. Has anybody run into the kindness of God? Mm. I'm talking about the kind of kindness that will let you live even when you deserve to die. Mm. The kind of kindness that is still generous towards you even after you've been stingy and selfish. See, God's kindness flows in abundance without conditions, and it operates differently. Mm. Mm. See, it wasn't uncommon for the new king to murder all of the members of the family of the old king, mm -hmm. so that way there would be nobody left to challenge him for the throne. Right, right. So essentially what Jonathan does is make David promise to be a different kind of king before he ever got into power and on the throne. Mm -hmm. Now I want to pause right there because that's a word for some young person that's listening today. You're still waiting on God to elevate you to the level you know in your heart you could get to. But my question is, what are you doing now that says to God, you can trust me to be different when I get there? Mm -hmm. What promises have you made? Mm -hmm. Have you promised to keep your hands clean? Mm -hmm. Promise not to sell out to the world when you get a little success under your belt? Mm -hmm. Promise to remember where you came from and who was yeah. with you before you made it? Or will God lose you when you get big? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The first part of our call to, to run mm -hmm. is to remember. Mm -hmm. There are some things you need to remember. And David in this moment is remembering that he made a vow. So he asked, is there anybody left from Saul's house to whom I can show kindness to for Jonathan's sake? Mm -hmm. Who do you need to remember today that could benefit mm -hmm. from your kindness? Mm -hmm. Who is that person in your family that don't nobody really fool with, you know, cause they kind of out there? <laughs> You know, the one who was sweet and cute as a kid, but then they got grown and chose a different path and now nobody really fools with them anymore. Who do you need to remember today? Who do you know that may be locked up but would love to get a letter from you? Who do you know that may be living down low or on the low down and could use some love and light? Who is God calling you to remember today? So David asks around and discovers that Jonathan has a son named Mephibosheth. I like to call him Phoebo. <laughs> uh -huh. And he's lame uh -huh. in both feet. Uh -huh. Now we read about what happened to Mephibosheth in 2 Samuel chapter 4 when it says that after news came that his father Jonathan and his grandfather Saul had died in battle, his nurse picked him up and tried to flee. Mm -hmm. But she was in such a hurry that he fell and became disabled. So here you have the grandson of a king who is lame, living in somebody else's house down in Lodabar, and he could have used the lift, but he's been left out. Mm -hmm. 
But lucky for Phoebo, he had a father who believed in life insurance and a king who made a vow and did not lie. And it was about to change his whole life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The reason why the writer of Hebrews talks about all the people who had faith in chapter 11 and then tells us in chapter 12 to remember that we are surrounded by people who had enough faith to lay a foundation for us and they didn't even live long enough to see it. Mm. Amen. It's the faith of the ones who came before us that is allowing us to live the lives that we live right now. Amen. Amen. So David had Phoebo brought up from Lodabar and summons him to the palace. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a defining moment because Phoebo isn't really sure why he's there. <laughs> the reason why his nurse took him and fled after his father died is because, like I said earlier, the new king would usually kill all the members of the old king's family. So Phoebo had been in hiding all of these years, hoping that David doesn't find out about him. And so Phoebo gets some and he shows a real, real humble mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because he has no idea if he's going to make it out alive. Mm -hmm. But David is actually excited to see him and tells Phoebo, look, don't be afraid. Yeah. Because not only am I going to show you kindness for your father's sake, but I'm also going to give you back all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about God. Just when you think it's about to be over, he comes bring, bringing gifts. <laughs> yeah, what won't he do? Yes, he will. Uh -huh. So this brings me to my next point. Once we've made it this far by faith, not only are we called to remember, but we are also called to uplift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What good would it have been for David to remember he made a vow, find out that Jonathan had a son, and then leave him living in Lodabar? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What good does it do to remember that loved one who's out there if you don't reach out and check on him and just say, hey, I thought about you, praying for you. Do you need anything? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What good does it do you to remember that you've got a church member who's going through a tough time, but you never pick up the phone and call them and encourage them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What good does it do for you to say you've made it so far in your career, but there's nobody else in the office who could say, if it wasn't for you, they wouldn't be where they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What good does it do you to remember if you're not going to uplift? Mm -hmm. David uplifted Mephibosheth, mm -hmm. not only in word, but also in status. Mm -hmm. And this is a part of the gospel message that I think most people miss. Mm -hmm. God's kindness towards us always comes with power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If David had shown Phoebe regular kindness, he would have been like, look, man, I got a pool house back here in the palace. You and your family pack up y'all stuff. Y'all can move into my pool house. I have my servants get you whatever you need. It's fine. Mm -hmm. That's regular kindness. Mm -hmm. But God's kindness always comes with freedom, mm -hmm. power, authority, and rulership. I know you don't believe me, but every day you wake up and open your eyes, that's God's kindness. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you also have every day? Mm -hmm. Free will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what does free will give you? Mm -hmm. Freedom, mm -hmm. power, authority, and rulership. Mm -hmm. So in order for David to stay true to his vow to show Phoebe kindness like the Lord's kindness, he has to give Mephibosheth some kind of freedom, power, authority, and rulership. Mm -hmm. So what you have is a king uplifting and reestablishing another king's kingdom so he too can have rulership because that's what God's kindness does. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, when your territory has been established by faith, you don't have to be threatened by helping somebody establish their stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Phoebe should have been a threat to David, but because David understood that what God has for him is for him and what God has for Phoebe is for Phoebe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's why I get excited about the gospel of Jesus Christ, because this same principle is true for all of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What God has for me is for me, but you don't have to be mad about that because God's got something for everybody. Amen. Amen. 
You mind if I teach it for a minute? Uh -huh. Teaching is my first gift. <laughs> God promises us rewards. Uh -huh. Does anybody know what a ward is? A ward is a designated area. Mm -hmm. People that grew up in Houston, sometimes they say, oh, I grew up in third ward, <laughs> right? I grew up in fifth ward. Or in the hospital, you have the children's ward or the mm -hmm. cancer ward. A ward, W-A-R-D, is simply a designated area. Mm -hmm. The prefix re means to go back to the beginning or to restore something to its original state. Mm -hmm. So when God promised to give us rewards, mm -hmm. like in the parable of the talents in Luke 19, for example, the servant's reward was rulership over cities in God's kingdom based on their level of faithfulness. Mm -hmm. God promised to give them designated areas or rewards in the kingdom for which they could rule over. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, humanity was awarded earth as our territory in which to rule and have dominion. Mm -hmm. That's in Genesis. Mm -hmm. But there was a great fall and sin caused our foreparents to lose their rulership and authority over the kingdom of earth, just like Saul lost his throne because of his sin. Mm -hmm. So all of humanity therefore became like Phoebo and we became lame in the feet and we're no longer able to walk with God and talk with God face to face, and we lost our award. Mm -hmm. But 40 and two generations, Jesus comes promising to reward mm -hmm. people or give back what had previously been ours in the beginning mm -hmm. because it had been awarded to us. Amen. Amen. This is the reason why following anybody other than Jesus Christ won't amount to much because no other leader in the history of the world has promised to help you get your stuff back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the only one who claimed to be the way, the gate, the door, the life, and have the keys and say he'd give them back to you. <laughs> That's why Jesus says in Luke 12, 34, don't be afraid, little flock, little flock. Your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Yes. Having dominion has always been our award and will one day be our reward. Yes. And Daniel saw the same thing in his vision in Daniel 7, 27, when he says, then the sovereignty, power, and greatness of all the kingdoms under heaven Y'all do know earth is under heaven. Mm -hmm. Will be handed over to who? The holy people of the most high. Mm -hmm. That's us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom. And all the rulers, again, that's us, mm -hmm. yeah. will worship and obey him. Come on. I know ain't nobody happy but me, but this gospel of Jesus Christ will uplift you. Mm -hmm. It will restore you. It will reward you. When Jesus returns, you get some returns. Mm. When Jesus comes back, you're getting some stuff back. Mm. All right. Amen. David uplifted Mephibosheth out of another man's house and helped him establish his own house because that's what God's kindness does. Yeah. David stood in the gap as a father for his best friend's son and helped him back into his rightful place of rulership and authority. All right. Who do you know that's living down in Lodabar who needs to be uplifted? Mm. Mm. Who do you know has made their home in the world and needs to be reminded that God is looking for people to show kindness to and that Jesus came to reward them with everything they lost? Mm -hmm. Who do you know that needs to be uplifted with the gospel message today? Come on, ma'am. We've come this far by faith and we've been called to remember, to uplift, and finally to nurture. Even after David promised to help Phoebo establish his own house, David said, yeah, but you are going to eat at my table mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. 
David made it a point to nurture his relationship mm -hmm. with Mephibosheth. See, David understood the magnitude of what sitting at the king's table could do for Phoebe and what it could mean for him because David sat at Saul's table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He learned a lot of the skills necessary to rule over his own kingdom sitting at the feet of Saul. This is why my brothers and sisters, the Christian home and the Christian family is so important because God designed it to teach the future rulers of the kingdom of God how to handle freedom, power, authority, and rulership. But the problem is some parents will uplift their kids, mm -hmm. give them everything, mm -hmm but won't nurture a healthy relationship to teach them how to manage what they've been given. Mm. 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 Then you have other parents who teach their kids everything, but then shelter them so much and refuse to give them any kind of freedom, mm. power, authority, or rulership, and so the kids never get practice. And then they go out into the world and they don't know what to do. Mm. And then in some homes, you have children who are so ready to leave their parents' kingdom that they fail to get equipped mm -hmm. on how to manage their own kingdoms. And so the world ends up having to teach them. Mm -hmm. But you need to know that the world's ways will not prepare you for kingdom rulership because the rules are different. Mm -hmm. David didn't just give Phoebe all this stuff and send him on his way. He set up a training program. Mm -hmm at his table every night so Phoebe could learn what it means to rule. Mm -hmm. What relationships do you need to be nurturing mm -hmm. now that you've made it this far? Mm -hmm. Who do you know that could use a mother figure and a father figure and a big brother and a, and a big sister to learn how to manage the things that God has blessed them with? Mm -hmm. Who needs to be invited to your table this week? Mm -hmm. What I love about God is that there is plenty of good room mm. <laughs> at his table. Amen. God the Father remembered that he created us to have dominion and rulership even after we messed up and lost our kingdom. And so he sent God the Son. Mm. God the Son uplifted us out of Lodabar of this world by willingly going to the cross and snatching back the keys of the kingdom that belonged to us and promised that he would keep our reward safe until he returned and he sent the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that is nurturing our relationship with God and teaching us what it means to be sanctified and children of the king and getting us ready to receive and rule over our just reward. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. God remembers, God uplifts, mm -hmm. and God nurtures. Mm -hmm. If God can run for us, mm -hmm. surely... Surely. We can run for others. Mm -hmm. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, mm -hmm. let us throw off everything that hinders mm -hmm. and the sin that so easily entangles. Mm -hmm. And let us run mm -hmm. <laughs> with perseverance, mm -hmm. the race marked out for us. Mm -hmm. yes. We've come this far by faith. Mm -hmm. So now what? Mm -hmm. It's time to run. Yeah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us please remain standing. Let's give God the praise again for this wonderful, dynamic, powerful, and wonderful fruit of God ministry drive the chambers. Amen. 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 Praise God. We extend the invitation to Christian discipleship. Is there one today? We've heard a mighty word of God yes. from one of God's uh, messengers on today. Amen. We have come this far by faith. Now what? Mm -hmm. Is there one today? Yes. Amen. Lord, Amen. In, in the chat, if you'd like for me to uh, reach out to you, reach out to you, pray with you, put your information in the chat. Uh, the tech team will make sure that I get that. And as we stand, 
let the song bless you on today. Is it one today? We come to this far by faith. Now what? God wants you in his kingdom. God wants you as one of his soldiers. God wants you. He loves you in the planning of your sins. Is it one today? We extend the offer and the invitation to give the preacher your hand, but give God your heart. Is it one today? Come right now while the blood is yet running warm in your body. You may be seated. This message that was that we are blessed with on today, let it resonate on your heart. Because mm. the preacher challenged us. We've come this far by faith. Now what? Mm -hmm. Are we gonna sit on our on our rusty dusty? Mm -hmm. Are we gonna run? Are we gonna tell others about Jesus Christ and and, and be that um, that 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 father figure or that or that elder? And we can nurture those relationships. We were challenged. I was challenged. Amen. So we just thank you, Minister Chambers. I cannot thank you enough. And, and you and Reverend Reed are going to be on my list. You're on my list. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so um, we want to, again, thank everyone for, for joining with us on today, uh, especially those uh, guests that have came out in person and also online. We thank you for uh, all of you for continuing your support of Stewart Chapel in, in your giving. The numerous ways to give, we have online giving. I believe First Lady uh, Tina has put that information in the chat. We have uh, Givelify. Uh, we put the PO box information in there, numerous ways that you can give to the kingdom of God. Amen. And so at this time, let us please stand and we can do, be dismissed. Praise God from whom, whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy you may be seated. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you, Lord, for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, and what our hearts have felt. We thank you, Lord, for this powerful message that we have been given yeah. through your servant on today. Lord, as we leave from this place, but never from your presence, may your grace and mercy follow us all the days of our lives. And we pray, Lord, that you that you bless us and keep us, that you will make your face a sign upon, upon us and be gracious unto us. And the Lord lift up his countenance and give us peace. From his now and forevermore. And the church said, 
Amen.